Okay, so in terms of um, parenting, what new parenting roles or household chores did you find yourself having to adjust to or did your partner have to sort of try and adjust to? Household chores. Sure. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> for me, it's a nightmare. I, we are still fighting. <laughs> it's still a nightmare for me as well. But we try me... to take... We try to help each other as much as we can. Mm, Can't okay. really say I'm responsible for this, he's responsible for that. We just mm. try to do things together. When he's free, he's doing something. When I'm free, I'm doing something, you know, just so we can get things done. Mm. Because if I you wait you. for me that I'm the one who has to cook the whole time, then mm. it becomes a problem. <laughs> yeah. For us also, like when we arrived, my husband was one of those I sit and you do your thing. And then he realized it wasn't realistic. Like we have to both work together or else, you know, like with me, I'd be so irritated because you're doing one, the kids, then the house has to be cleaned. Then they suffer for everyone. So it mm -hmm. just wasn't working. And we realized good, when you work together, it's better. One, you get to like, when you're cooking together, you get to have a conversation when you're doing the cooking, you get to do yeah. the laundry. Yeah. And what I've discovered yeah. is my husband is actually a better cook. So as humble as it was, I'm not complaining. That means less cooking. <laughs> like you know, for me, it's quite the opposite. My husband can't cook to save his life. I think that's one of the things that we really argue about. So if I'm sick, <laughs> no one is going to eat in this house. People, he will not cook. you will do everything uh -huh. else. Whether it's putting laundry in the washing machine, whether it's looking after the kids, but cooking, guys, my child, my children will go hungry if I don't make a meal. Ah, you will be surprised. <laughs> you know He's coming. Give him a chance. Give him a yes. chance. <laughs> you know what? When it comes to to, to household chores and, and stuff like that, um, back home, you know, we had we, we had maids. But wait, the moment you move and you realize, okay, mm. having a maid in in a foreign country is a luxury. You know, yes. maids back home are seriously underpaid. There's no maid mm -hmm. in this country who accept fifty US dollars per month as salary. You know, yeah. But uh, also, come to think about it, uh, we may be saying they are underpaid, but how much are people getting uh, paid back in Zimbabwe? Paid. You have yeah, a full time job. You are working. At, how much were you getting paid? So that's very right. Because probably like the salary that you'd earn as a call center agent is how much a maid is actually paid when you then mm. move to another country. It's equivalent, yeah. literally. So you find that when, when, when you now move to, to, to a different country, having access to, to maids or people that come in and help you out once in a while is very difficult. So you have to take time to sort of learn and start doing all those other chores all by yourselves and make sure that as far as, you know, having responsibilities goes, you, you split the roles. So for us, I think the biggest thing that I've had to um, sort of do when it comes to household chores is just trying to make sure that I divide, you know? So for me, I know that once I prepare supper and I do the dishes, then the kids are no longer on my hands. I've done my part for the whole day. So my husband mm. is the one who's in charge of putting them to bed, make sure they brush their teeth. Those are the roles and that's the sort of like the routine that we now have. So every evening, he's the one who does that. And for me, it actually helps because now I also have to clean the house in the evening because in the morning, the, mm. the, the schedule is so hectic, you know, and you've got school run. Right now, I don't have school run because of the lockdown. But in the morning, you've got, you know, you have to take your kids to school. You have to prepare the lunch boxes and you have to prepare for your own day. So for us, I now actually have to do all the cleaning in the evening. And it can be very stressful, mm. like my brother was saying. Yeah, At least if you're able to do it in the evening, that's okay. Now imagine during this period, uh, kids are not going to school and all that. My children are sleeping at 10 p.m. Hey. Wow. I can't even start thinking of cleaning at 10 p.m. No, thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm too tired. <laughs> exactly. Okay, cool. So what have been the most like um bad, like what was your worst bad parenting moment? as far as staying there is concerned, either that you, you did yourself, you're like, okay, 
I think this is this whole new Western culture that is sort of seeping into me or that you observed that another parent was doing? <sighs> um, for me, I would say there are times that I would get home and I'm so tired from work. Uh, I have to cook. I have to clean. I have to do my school. And I literally don't get any time with my children. And, you mm. know, sometimes it's, it just makes me feel bad. Like, makes you feel guilty. Nothing. Exactly. Because they're still very young. They also need time with their parents, you know, just to sit and do some games with them. Yeah, very right. Yeah, how their day was and all that. But sometimes I just don't have the time, you know? I, so I guess you there's a lot of you playing around this table, yeah? <laughs> For me, it's actually the. The opposite. So I have a lot of time with my kids because my child was in public school last year. She was going to school and then she faced some bullying and racism and different stuff. So I then made the decision to homeschool. So now I have her at home. So I literally have my kids 24-7 every minute of the day, you know. But what like what Tafazo mentioned that sometimes when you have so much to do, you get irritated. Mm -hmm. Like the kid wants to say something and you're thinking, I have to do laundry. Like what we're laughing about, <laughs> Tafazo, which is the ironing, the laundry. <laughs> it's just too much. And then you want your house to be clean. Like when I got here, the pressure of mm -hmm. having a clean house, you know, that classy yeah. home type of look where mm -hmm. I was in those homes place. and I'm like, do they have kids? In those homes, <laughs> <Because I'm laughs> and we I don't know how they up. keep up with it. Our never looks like that. <laughs> so I know, and you you end up getting irritated to say put everything where it belongs when sometimes yeah, the kids just, just want to sniffing. eat. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I think for me, right in terms of you know um, not spending enough time with your kids. And, and 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 at the same time, you've got that guilt to say, you know what, I, I need to do more. But like what you're saying, sometimes when you then move, you've got all these things that are happening around you, other than just adjusting. You know, you take on new roles, you take on new projects. You know, some of us have started YouTubing. People will be like, YouTubing, is that a real thing? I'm taking it seriously. So yes, that means oh, when no. I'm doing these videos, I'm taking <laughs> 15 minutes time out of my day or an hour out of my day that I could have spent with my children. I think one of my worst habits is that when they when they really get snaggy and, and they start harassing me and they want my attention <laughs> and I can't give it to them, I'm I'm busy giving sweets here, guys. Like I just give them a lollipop. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm I was about to mention that. <laughs> Sugar rice. I'm telling you, it gives them, it, it gives me like 30 <laughs> minutes to just breathe, you know, other than hiding in the toilet. I'm so guilty and, of that. Yeah, other than right, are you serious? Stuff, I'm, I'm telling you, I'll give them a, a snack, a sweetie, I'll do something that I know is wrong, you know, it's bad for their health, but I still do it because it keeps them quiet for 30 minutes. But can I ask, do they get sugar rush? Like when you want them to sleep and then because you've given them candy, they're up the next two hours. Did, don't you ever experience no. that? Uh, no, so I that's think, good. I think no, I think if you give you them too much. Like yeah, it's not like that intense, guys. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> the only problem is not going to cause half in this house. <laughs> So really, that's me as far as bright parenting goes. So what have been some of the positive things that you guys, you know, have seen your children being exposed to that you feel like maybe they may not have been able to get the same kind of experience back home? Um, for me, I, I think um, it's the chores. Like when it comes to, uh, to doing chores, uh, back home, we know I never saw my dad cooking. I mm -hmm. never saw him cleaning the house. But here, we all cook, we all clean, we all do laundry. So my mm -hmm. kids will grow up knowing, no, we all contribute equally, you know? Mm -hmm. There's no, mm -hmm. mommy only does this, daddy only does this, and all that. So that's something mm -hmm. that they will grow up to know. Unlike when they were back home, uh, where chores are much more divided. 
And maybe if even they, they grow up with that mentality that only the woman is supposed to do this, only the man is supposed to do yes. this. Yes. Yes. Because yeah, because when you relocate, you realize that your child is exposed to so many things. They challenge themselves. The other day, mm-hmm. Katie was saying, "Mommy, I want to be a firefighter." I'm like, "A firefighter? You know, it's something no. that." And don't discourage her. Yes, of course. Because yeah. it's something that, like you know, you, you'd never hear at any child who's a a little girl back home would probably even say. And even if they say it, most people will be like, "Ah, okay." it's not for girls. Someone would try to discourage mm. it to say, no, that's not for girls. Why not being a, you know, a, 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 a fashion designer or something that is assumed to be girly. But for her, she's, you know, she challenges herself and she's telling me all these things. For me, I like the idea that you can be anything you want in Australia. Like you can literally make money out of anything. You know, like what you're yes. talking about, people not understanding that you enjoy doing YouTube. Literally here you can do subscription for moms and just make money from people subscribing <laughs> monthly. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I think it has helped. So you literally have opportunities to be exactly who you want to be. Like you can literally mm-hmm. follow your passion. So I think and that's you'll one still of make a killing out of that. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you'll make a, it has really opened my mind to say, your child can become anything they want to, and you can invest in their, like you can nurture their skills. Mm-hmm. Like what you're saying, for me, I realized that um, when, when Caitlin goes to school, I think it's literally just part of the education system here in South Africa. You know, the issue of entrepreneurship is cultivated in your child from the time they're in grade R, before they even go to grade one. So my child, mm. you know, some of us, you start thinking of making money, you know, in fact, if anything, um, the culture is, I need to work to get a job. I go to school mm-hmm. to get a job. Not to be the one who is employing people, not to be the employer, sure. but the employee. So mm-hmm. um, when, when entrepreneurship is part of your curriculum from the time that they are like four years old or five years old, you know, that's how you find a 10-year-old becoming a millionaire because already in their mind it's already been opened. But now when you move mm-hmm. and you see what other people are doing, you're realizing that's how other people's economies are growing. But from the time that you're five years old, you're already taught how to make money. That's true. Mm. So what advice would you guys give any parents that are thinking of relocating with their children? Um, I would say um, it's a very good idea. Uh, take a leap of faith. Uh, go out there. Find opportunities. Tell your kids. As long as you know what you want, uh, you'll be set. Don't let all this, uh, like, culture shocks and uh, other challenges that we may be facing stop you from doing what you want, from relocating to other countries. You need to go out there and explore and check it from there. If it doesn't work out for you, you can always go back home. For me, I have mixed feelings. All I'll say, like what I said to Tafad's wife before she decided to move was where you your pros. Me? You're telling Tafad to move. <laughs> My bad. Anna wants to go back to Zimbabwe. <laughs> Do you know, honestly, if it was I like to me and I had a job and things were working out, like when I wear the pros and cons, I would say you need to do that, especially if you have kids that are young. Like, Mm -hmm. people don't talk about daycare expenses. And, you know, that's like what I was mentioning, the idea of moving, you'll be thinking, I'll be living in the biggest house, the biggest cars. People are buying things Uh, on credit. Daycare, Exactly. (laughs) Because daycare, like with me, Rufaro, daycare is like 100 bucks per child. So if I've got three, that's $300 daily. So can you imagine? Mm -hmm. At the end of the week, your pay is finished. Do you get what I mean? So those are some of the things that we never talk about. And the idea of raising children by yourself, like having no maids, no one, maids are expensive, $35 an hour, no one is, you know. And sometimes you have a a little one. There are no hassles in these economies. You can't just become a money changer. It doesn't work like that. (laughs) It doesn't. So I, I feel like people should really sit down and make sure you're making the decision together. The worst thing you can do is move with your spouse and then he sits and is like, I'm not doing jack. In any, I'm those men. Yeah, women should be doing everything. If you're not on the same page, you will go crazy. 
because it yeah. means you're doing things by yourself and it means yes. Kuti, you're not working together and now i understand people who get really depressed because as long as you don't have help and you're not taking a break mm -hmm. you will go crazy yes from the, definitely. Burnout, mm -hmm. the depression those things are very real mm -hmm. the first few months think? were really hard for me <laughs> i almost fell into depression Mm -hmm. ah, thank you guys for this call. I feel so much better. I'm normal. <laughs> you see, <laughs> and people never talk about all that. Yeah, we always. just look at the positives. <laughs> mm -hmm. You but can be to prepare. When you decide to have that focus or that mentality to say, I need to relocate, be prepared to know that you're going to start from the bottom and then you sure. have to work it up. It doesn't just happen that, you know, you move and things just automatically move with you. If you're a bank manager, you're automatically just going to get a job and become a bank manager. It's not everyone who's fortunate to experience that. And when you've got children, mm. you need to make sure that you keep a close eye on them. Because in these Western cultures, you know, suicidal thoughts and all those forums, they are there and your child is getting, you know, mixed up in all those things. Like what you're saying in terms of uh, bullying at school, Anna, for your child. You have mm -hmm. to think about those things. And so, so what are the next steps? Instead of saying, you know, instead of keeping your child in that environment, you, you make tough choices like, okay, so maybe now I have to do homeschooling, you know, which is mm -hmm. something that you may not be able to do back home. So having to prepare yourself for all those changes is very, very important. I think Jafar's were sleeping now. It's almost midnight for you, yeah? <laughs> yes. Can you please let me sleep? <laughs> <laughs> thank you to our people sacrificing thank you for having us it's really nice to have yeah, honest conversations like exactly. there's a lot that's never talked about that's really mm -hmm. affects everyone yeah I'm, so I'm sure happy. that's a topic we can go on and on and on but yeah yeah there's a lot of this mm -hmm. all right guys so this is it from us i hope that you enjoyed this episode we're talking about parenting whilst living abroad so thank you so much guys for watching please like and share your comments on your views on this particular video and see you on the next one